All right, everybody, how's it going? We're going to be continuing with the Nostalgia Stories videos. And we're bringing it back to basically probably the first video game I ever played. Um, and that's going to be probably a lot of people's favorites. Uh, that's going to be Pokemon. And for me specifically, I started playing on my Game Boy with blue version of Pokemon. This is uh, definitely... <laughs> Probably something that holds a lot of memories for a lot of people. Pokemon is obviously... I, I don't want to call it, like, the game of our generation, really. But, uh, I feel like everyone that grew up with Pokemon starting, you know, playing Blue. I mean, I was born <laughs> when this game was released. Uh, so, this was definitely my introduction to games and Pokemon itself and I think we all have a lot of really precious and dear memories and so I, I was going to talk about two of the games that's going to be blue version which was the first one that I started with and crystal which was my second game that I played for uh, Pokemon crystal I definitely have a lot more memories of blue gosh I don't think I ever beat blue I was so young and I had no idea what to do and the thing that I vividly remember was trying to catch all of the Pokemon on the Elite Road. Because you know how you could go to the left um, from your starter town? And that's also like where the entrance to the Elite uh, the Elite Four is. And over there, I mean, you can get access to grass where there's like level 40, level 50 Pokemon. I, I tried for so long to catch those guys when I, I was like, you know, level 7. Eight <laughs> with with my my Charmander because obviously we, uh, everybody picked Charmander. I mean, <laughs> Charmander's kind of fantastic, but uh, yeah, I just I, I tried to do that for so long, and then I also remember when you had to surf on the Elite Road and you'd run into like seals and dugongs and stuff like that. I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you could occasionally see a dugong. I might be thinking of the person that had a dugong, actually. I just always died there. Regardless of if it was the trainer or if it was just, like, surfing. I, I died there so many times. Oh, my gosh. I, I That's one of the few things I still remember from uh, Blue version. Because it had been so long. It's been so, so long since I played Blue. I definitely have more vivid memories of Crystal. Uh, Crystal was... Definitely the game that I put the most hours into. It was also the first game that I ever learned about cheating. Uh, I duped my Dragonite, my level 100 Dragonite. I duped it with the PC box glitch. Uh, good times. His name was B. I was really, uh, <laughs> I was really good with names back then. But uh, I got Crystal, and my brother actually got Silver version. And so he started out with Totodile, and I, because he screwed me over. I started off with Cyndaquil, which is still to this day my favorite Pokemon. Um, outside of the uh, the Crustacean line, I love me Crawdont and Krabby and Kingler and Clauncher. All those good Krabby boys. I, I love crabs and lobsters, crustaceans in general, so like their Pokemon form is even better. I wish. I, I just. Because you guys all remember like Ash's Kingler, right? Crabhammer, I thought, was the most insane. The most insane thing in the world. I thought I thought Crab Hammer was sick. But anyways, so I, I started out with Cyndaquil. He started out with Totodile. You know, he played through the game a lot. Um, had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a ton, you know. And getting ruined by milk tanks and rollouts and all that good stuff. And I remember um, chasing, you know, Raikou and Entei and Suicune. And doing it with the um, the route where Sudowoodo is. So that was like, at least in my small brain at the time the closest area where i can go between routes because every time you change routes the legendaries move around basically so i'll just go up and down that's how i caught the legendaries with good old scary face what's the scary face or is it mean look i'm so bad with pokemon nowadays you'll you'll see i i stopped playing when white and black came out i played that um and at that point in my life i had started getting into pc games and so I just kind of slowly moved away from handhelds and I've just recently gone back into Pokemon with Arceus because the open world concept is really great. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next expansion that's coming out, which I don't want to butcher the names. All I know is that they have a, a, a Lotad um, 
<laughs> regional that I'm looking forward to. I don't know if anyone saw the Paella Lotad of memes. <laughs> Those are pretty sick. But uh, anyways, I think the best story that I have for Pokemon is, like I was saying earlier, my brother started with Totodile and I started with Cyndaquil. And, you know, we got all of our guys up to level 100. Mostly just our starters, but I had a Dragonite that was level 100, the one that I duped. And so we... This, this is probably my favorite memory from this game. We uh, were playing against each other, 1v1, you know, with the land cables. And I, specifically out of spite, made sure that my Typhlosion knew Thunder Punch. I also made sure that he was one speedy boy, so he always had first attack. And I'm not 100% sure, but I bet Typhlosion's probably faster than Feraligator in general, so no issues there. But yeah, so... We, we were we were 1v1-ing on a car, uh, a road trip with my family up north. We have like an eight-hour drive or something. And so we, we were playing, and, you know, first up, obviously, we got Typhlosion and Feraligator, right? I called him uh, Fireball. I have many Fireball Juniors. And so I used li Lightning Punch, and it uh, one-shot his Feraligator. And, you know, he turned his game off in the middle of that. And, uh... You know what that did? That corrupted his save file. And that was the last day that my brother ever played Pokemon. He never got back into the series. That was it. Um, that will probably live in my head rent-free for the rest of my life. That was one of the greatest things ever. I, I, I can't even tell you how fantastic that was. He was so upset. He's an he's an older brother. My brother's older than me than three four years, and yep, that was that was a highlight. So that that is probably my favorite memory. So as always, you know, the whole point of this series is just to talk about you know the things that we grew up with and loved about video games and how they've kind of melded you into who you are nowadays. I feel like nostalgia is huge uh, when it comes to games, especially for those of us who grew up with the technology changing so quickly and you know now you got I mean my computer's ridiculous in comparison to like the the Game Boy and the PS2 that I used to play I mean I have a a one terabyte NVMe sitting over here and I thought that I was nuts when I got the eight gigabit or eight gigabit eight megabyte extender for my PS2 memory card I thought that was like oh my god I just doubled my space like I mean I, I look back at that and it's like holy crap you know Look how far we've come and how amazing the games are now. So, if you guys have any stories yourself, let me know down below. Uh, I think the next game series that I'm going to talk about is probably going to be Jack and Daxter. Jack and Daxter is probably, like, top five game series for me. Um, definitely holds a special place in my heart for games that I played a lot. And I think it's a pretty nostalgic game for a lot of people. Um, that was one of the big series back then. Naughty Dog was making some good games. So... As always, guys, thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you on the next one.